Hey tubers, kitchao.com. This is part two of diversity and it's dealing with uh, physical um, uh, physical challenges which make people appear a little bit different. I'm going to start with um, when physical difficulties interfere with conversation. When you're speaking with someone who has a physical problem, let him or her decide whether to discuss the condition or just converse without mentioning it. If you're speaking a foreign language, anticipate anticipate settings where you will need to talk and anticipate a few answers to routine questions so you don't feel completely at a loss. Blindness. Conversing with a blind person can be disconnecting at first because sighted people sometimes make unwarranted assumptions about blind people's capabilities and blind people rely on the cues other than eye contact to pace the conversation. Both of the deficits can be offset courtesy and understand on both sides. To compensate for his lack of visual contact, you can be sensitive to his or her facial and body cues and to the tone of voice that he or she uses to suggest when to speak, when to listen, and when the topic is going to shift being in a wheelchair. If you expect a conversation with a wheelchair user to last longer than a minute, find somewhere to sit or squat down to her love eye level. Doing so shows respect and can ease the strain on his or her neck. Treat her with grown-up good manners, shake hands, make eye contact. Attention Deficit Disorder People with attention deficit disorder or attention hyperactivity disorder may frequently change the subject and get distracted easily. Try to keep the conversation floating along and bring it back to the main topic occasionally. Don't overreact. Autism. Um, there's a good phrase here that a young gentleman wrote who's autistic. He said, I think in pictures, words are like a second language to me. So people with autism may have difficulty with the usual forms of verbal and non-verbal communication, especially with interpreting another person's tone of voice, facial expression, and body language. When you talk with someone who is autistic, speak clearly and proceed carefully with simple closed-ended questions and answers. For instance, I like your red sweater, where did you buy it? is better than a general hi, how are you? Keep the tone and volume of your voice even. Don't shout. And you can also look to the, um, the person's parent or caregiver for guidance about how to talk to um, the person who is autistic. I'm gonna wait for the next video, which will be my concluding video, um, how to talk to babies. And it's been nice, tubers. I didn't know it would take this long. I don't have long to go now. I have just a few videos to make. And we are still on the subject of the globe. I like the globe. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let me take maybe the other way around. Clockwise, anti-clockwise, you name it. I'm gonna let the video run out. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying your Sunday. I'm playing my music as usual.